Okay, hello everyone and welcome to Handmade Hero, the show where we code a complete game live on Twitch. No libraries, no engine. We gotta do everything ourselves. And again, the reason why we do this is two reasons. One, so that you can sort of have the complete freedom to do whatever you want on a game. It's so that by the time you're done with Handmade Hero, you pretty much know how absolutely everything works. Uh, and that's a pretty powerful thing to be able to, to, uh, to know and to be able to do, depending on the circumstance. But also, it's... Uh, it's honestly, it's a lot of fun. We get to play with a lot of stuff that you don't typically get to do, and uh, we, we kind of try to bring back that old school feeling of, of being able to sit down at a computer and sort of start poking at the innards as much as possible. At least to the extent that Windows lets us, which is not always as much as we like, but you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, that's, the, that's the state of the world these days. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. If you would like to follow along at home, we are on day 99. Um, so if you have pre-ordered the game, you have access to the source code, uh, you can go ahead and download Day98 source code and unzip that into directory. You'll be exactly where I am right now. And where I am right now uh, is actually, uh, it's kind of a, an interesting um, breaking point here uh, where we kind of have to, we, we kind of got to do a bunch of work to, to, to sort of push forwards. We wanted to add lighting to the game and we did the work to add normal maps uh, to our pipeline, but what we have not done yet is actually produced anything that the normal maps can sample from. Uh, we essentially don't have any kind of a light field. And so what we need to do now is we need to figure out a way that we're gonna be able to get uh, a light field of some kind. And so that's what we've got to tackle today. Now we had to reboot the machine pre-stream because the machine is old and it doesn't really work so well. Um, but uh, so I got to go ahead and, and get Visual Studio back into a state where it's working here. It seems to be uh, relatively uh, good there, so that's fine. I uh, got to open up our Blackboard, which hopefully is uh, saved at the location uh, where we were last time. Let's uh, see here. Okay, days. There it is. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, let's just real quick. Um, I'm just going to say what we kind of need to do here. Uh, in order to make forward progress on our on our lighting. So <clears throat> here on day 99, uh, really what we're looking for, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I gotta move this over here. Let's try that again. So here's day 99. Uh, so what we have to do now is we have to make um, some light fields. And what we wanna do here is we already sort of talked about this, what we were gonna do. We wanna be able to sample the lighting in the world so that it, at any given point, uh, we can sort of get some notion of what's going on around us in terms of light. And so there's a couple different ways that we talked about doing that, uh, two of which are relatively straightforward for us to implement, which are the ones we'll try to do today. And one of which is still kind of a little up in the air because we're not sure exactly how uh, we're gonna produce that field. but. What we need to do is we need to produce three light fields eventually. Uh, we kind of talked about these before. We've got you know a top, um, a middle, right, uh, and a bottom that we wanted to produce. And these are basically three different bitmaps that we want to be able to pull data from in order to compute the lighting. And the way these work, essentially, is you can imagine them all sort of stacked on top of each other, right, like so. And we're sort of imagining, uh, again, because we really have to come up with approximations and hacks for lighting in 2D because you know, we don't really know what the full description of the world is, so we can't do any kind of you know, fully real simulation. Uh, and even in 3D, you can't do real simulation, but you can do closer approximations, certainly. What we're kind of pretending is the middle layer, right? So this guy here, these are our, our layers stacked up on top of each other. The middle layer is sort of where things are in the world, you might say. And so we're kind of thinking of this as being the ground and this as being the sky. And so when we sample, you know, when we, when we sort of are looking at lighting, uh, essentially what we're saying is when we want to sort of look, cast out lighting uh, around us to see what kind of light is incident on a surface, we're sort of saying that, all right, we're going to produce a ground bitmap that we'll use probably as the ground as well, right? We want to produce a ground bitmap and that we can probably just use and sample our lighting out of that, right? And then we could have a sky bitmap, which is some bitmap that just represents what's up there uh, in the sky as well. And we could sample from that. Uh, and those two would make our top and our bottom um, light fields to sample from. 
uh, what we're calling sort of environment maps for now. And then we've got a middle that is really like the part that's going to be a little more tricky. And what we want to be able to do with the middle map is we want to be able to sort of use some um, amount of occlusion in here so that, you know, as a light passes by, let's say there's a moving light source that's passing by the place that we're sampling, we want to get that sort of passing by effect so that the light kind of plays across the surface of whatever we're uh, sampling. And furthermore, if there's large objects, like if there's something big in between these two, we want not very much light to get past to, uh, to see uh, the point that we're talking about. So this middle map is really going to be the one where most of the trickery comes in. The top and the bottom maps are really going to be a lot easier. They're mostly going to be more about bookkeeping. They're more about let, ha, making sure that our renderer uh, can first save a copy of whatever that base layer ground is before it starts to splat stuff on top of it uh, because we need to be able to sample from the unsplatted version, right? And that's really all we're talking about here uh, in terms of, of uh, producing these maps. The sky map, since that's not something that you ever direct, directly see, it's basically something that is unseen by the player, but that's sort of what's above uh, the world, can really be whatever we want, but uh, we'll probably want to put stuff in there. Um, you know, uh, it depends on exactly what we want to do, but you could imagine if there's uh, things like sort of above uh, the player, like if they're in a dungeon or something and light is coming down through there, uh, we could stick light in there. So things that are below it appear to have this extra light coming on them. And it sort of, it suggests what is up here, uh, if, if you will. So that's kind of just some something to think about. So what we need to do today before we can make any more progress on our normal mapping stuff, which we've sort of done most of the work for, but we haven't really gone and, and really finished it up, what we have to do today is now go and produce some of these maps, uh, at least the top and the bottom map, and the middle one I guess we can sort of leave out for now, um, but we need to at least produce the top and the bottom map so that we can have some semblance of a real, uh, you know, a test map to sample from, uh, just to see if our normal map is working and to give us some idea of what's going on there. Uh, so we don't really need to do anything particularly special with those right now. We can literally make test patterns in them uh, and then see to it that the test patterns actually are respected, right? Um, so let's go ahead and do that, right? Let's go ahead and, uh, and, and start to get that going because it's really going to be uh, a bunch of wiring, right? So at the moment, uh, we can sort of do that by saying we've got these environment maps, right? Uh, where are those guys? Handmade render group. Uh, we've got these environment maps here. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll start by creating uh, some space for those, those environment maps in here. Uh, and then we'll sort of progress and push them outwards as we uh, need to, um, as we sort of like uh, make the renderer into more and more of a thing. So <clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and, and drop those. I think those probably uh, should really just be down here because they're things that are fairly dynamic. So I'm going to put them down here. Um, in fact, I guess these are really transient things, so I guess I'll put them with the ground buffers. Uh, so let's call these our ground, uh, or uh, our sky, I guess, or I guess we could call them our top, or, or end top, end bottom, since we don't really know that it's sky, right? It could be some other thing. And end middle. <clears throat> So what I need to do now is I need to just allocate some space for these guys. Uh, and I guess I don't really need these to be pointers. They can just be that. And then I'll make uh, the bitmaps uh, in them. Now, the question we have here, there is a kind of an open question, which is just how big should these maps be? And that's a good question, right? Because this is lighting. Uh, we don't necessarily need it to be at the same resolution as we would do everything else. Uh, we could say that it's going to be sort of a subsampling of that. I'm not sure yet. Uh, so, but that's just something to think about is we don't really know uh, what we want these environment maps uh, resolutions really to be. Um, but uh, so I'll just say, you know, env map width and env map height are going to be things that we'll specify for now outside. And we'll just assume that we have made these environment maps to whatever the specification is here. Okay. So going into handmade.cpp where we actually initiate um, sort of our transient stuff. When we're, uh, when we're doing this initialization, we can also here do our env top, middle, and bottom stuff uh, and our, our env width and height, that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, that the trans state 
right? That is going to initialize the env map width. And I'm just gonna say that the, the env map width uh, and height are gonna be, let's say 512, I'm just pick, pulling these totally randomly, 512 by 256, that's just what it's going to be. Um, you know, why not? Uh, and I guess what I could do to make this a little a bit easier on us is I could just make this an array so we can initialize them uh, in a loop and we'll just know, you know, uh, that uh, uh, zero is top and two is bottom, right? One is middle. That's what those are going to be set to. And, uh, or, you know what, let's go the other way. I just, you know, now that I think about it, uh, Z going up makes a little more sense, doesn't it? That's the way the rest of our coordinate system works. Might as well try to stay a little consistent there. Um, so, all right, so let's go through these in a list, uh, in a loop rather. Uh, so we've got our map index and our map index uh, is going to run from zero to however many of these we have, right? And then we are going to <clears throat> take whichever environment map we're on Right, so here's our map. We take it out from the end maps array one at a time. And we go ahead and initialize all of the LODs in there, right? And remember what we said these LODs were going to be is they were gonna be successively blurrier versions of the same map, right? So we start with you know, an LOD that's at the full resolution of end map width and map height and each time through, we basically have that size so that it gets smaller and smaller. So, okay, let's get rid of that. So what we now wanna do is we wanna do another loop inside, which is whichever LOD index this is, or LOD index this is, uh, and that's going to go uh, all the way to however many elements are in that array. At the moment we've said there are four. And so what we can do then is say that the map LOD at that index is going to be one of those make empty bitmap calls. Uh, which we already have, uh, which I believe is set up to, to allocate space for us. Uh, so all we really have to do is just give it that and it will, it will go ahead and push size onto our transient arena to store that map. So what we can do there is say, all right, uh, let's go ahead and, and get that done. We'll pass the uh, trans arena, right? Uh, there we go. That's our transient arena there we will pass whatever the width and height is that we want of this particular thing. Uh, and then I guess we might as well clear it to zero, though I guess I don't really know that we need to do that. Uh, it's probably, uh, to be honest, I guess we don't really need to because we got to fill it with stuff. Um, so anyway, what we want to do is start out, because we want this to be successively lower levels of detail, what we want to do is start out with that uh, sort of width and height that we are saying that the highest level of, of detail should be. And then each time through here, I'm just gonna go ahead and shift that down by one so that we essentially get half the size uh, uh, in each dimension, which is a, you know, a quarter of the size uh, for, for the bitmap, right? So that should produce for us uh, that sort of cascading level detail where we have maps that are first you know, the full size, then a quarter of the size, then a quarter of that size, like an eighth, I'm sorry, 16th, um, and, uh, and so on, right? So that should give us the maps. Uh, then when we, we're down here, we have to have a way to actually, uh, you know, sort of pass those maps, which we've sort of been passing nothing, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to have to start passing those maps. Uh, really pretty straightforward, right? We're just going to pass uh, the, the end maps as they come. So we've got uh, the first end map, uh, like so. We've got uh, the second, oops, that's not game state, that's trans state, like so. Uh, and then that final one. Now, I believe these go, these went in the other order, right? But I'm gonna look it up first in our uh, <clears throat> render group. So the coordinate system, when we actually push one of those on, it takes the top and the middle and the bottom, like so. Uh, and that's how we said that those were encoded. So that's uh, what those are. And if I compile that now, I can just go and clean up anything that we had there. Oh, of course the uh, render group uh, that uh, that uh, environment map, is this not, do we not pound include? We don't pound include uh, any of the render stuff here. I think that's probably a mistake. So honestly, I think what I'd like to do is go ahead and, and pull that out here. I'd like that to be included up here, uh, ideally. Um, but, uh, oh, and of course loaded bitmap uh, is not there, but that should also be <clears throat> moved out. Looks like I, uh, 
made that a little bit too high up as well. Here's where we're actually putting this stuff, uh, like so. But loaded bitmap, um, I'm gonna actually pull that out into the render group as well, because that's something that probably eventually wants to uh, live in some sort of rendering oriented context. So uh, what is happening here? Okay, so these are pointers and they really should not have been pointers. That was a mistake. Uh, so let's get rid of that. Uh, and then we should be able to compile uh, and uh, let's see here, sample environment map, uh, looks like everything is kosher. Now, of course, these maps just have garbage in them. Well, actually, I guess technically they have just zero in them at the moment uh, because they're in the Tran Arena, which would have been cleared when it was initially passed to us. Uh, so we should really get nothing in particular happening here. There should be no lighting contribution from them, which is fine. Uh, that's totally what we would have expected. So now what we want to do is we want to actually put, start putting something in there so that we can start uh, actually sampling from it. So what I would like to do first is I'd like to actually request that we draw these maps somewhere so that I can see that they're actually, you know, doing something, right? I want uh, to actually, I want to be able to verify that these maps are, are having something in them that we think that they have in them, right? I don't want to just start trying to sample them blind. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, in here where we uh, draw the, you know, do the coordinate system call, what I'd like to do is I'd like to go ahead and add some calls before we do that to draw what is in uh, at least the top level of the environment map, which I don't actually know if there's anything else that we're using at the moment. Uh, LOD index may or may not be doing in this. So we are actually using the roughness to determine what LOD index uh, to use. So I guess, the question is, which roughness level uh, did we actually put in there uh, when we did make a sphere normal map? Roughness, make sphere normal map. Zero, zero. So we're still sampling from the, we're always going to be sampling from that most, from that topmost LOD, right? You can see here that we've got roughness times whatever that array count is, and we're rounding that. So that's basically going to give us. Uh, you know, if we're passing zero, that's which is what we said the roughness was everywhere. That's going to give us always that top level LOD. So that should be fine. So when we've done this, uh, when we've when we've uh, gone to draw these, I really just need to draw that top level so that we can take a look at what that looks like, and then we'll at least know what we're sampling from. So I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, coordinate system call here, uh, and I'm just going to make another one of them like so, where I'm going to say, all right, ignore the environment maps, ignore the tree normal map, all that stuff. Let's just draw um, <clears throat> somewhere in the world, and I'm not sure where we're gonna put it at the moment. Let's just go ahead and draw those, those top level maps. So that's the trans state, you know, the end maps, right? Uh, I wanna draw zero, LOD zero, like so. Uh, and I want to draw three of these, right? I want to draw nth map one and nth map two. I just want to draw the top level LOD. And maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll go ahead and do this as well in a loop because this may get a little more complicated if we want to start drawing all the LOD levels. So let me just go ahead and say that we're going to do map index. Uh, we'll do it for each of the maps. So there we go, nth maps. And now we should have a way to draw all of them. Now I need to put it somewhere. So I guess I will say, uh, let's see, the x-axis and the y-axis. Um, let's, let's go ahead and, and redefine those here. I'm going to say that the x-axis and the y-axis uh, are going to be scaled. Maybe, you know, let's, let's say that there's a, a map scale and the map scale is going to be like, I don't know, 50. It's going to be 50, uh, and we'll just say that this is going to be map scale 0. Oh, 50 is probably too much. Huh? Are these are these drawing? We're still in screen space here, aren't we? Oh, okay, so if we're in screen space, that makes it even easier, really. What I can do with the x-axis, y-axis stuff is I could actually just stuff in there uh, what the, the map actual... Uh, 
what the actual size of the that LOD of the map is, right? So I could just do loaded bitmap um, LOD equals map uh, LOD zero, like so, and then just say that we're drawing that. Uh, and what I can do here is is make it so that we take out whatever its width was uh, and whatever its height was, and that's what'll, what we'll actually draw it as, right? Um, so we don't really know where to draw these yet, so I guess I'll just say uh, map P or something like that. Uh, and that looks about right. So there we go, map P, x-axis, y-axis, color LOD. The color we don't really care about. That should always be full brightness. We don't want to affect it in any way. And so what I can do here is then say, okay, map P plus equals y-axis, which will move us down uh, to the next uh, one so we can draw them. And maybe I'll do, you know, just a five pixel spacer or something in here as well, right? Uh, something that can kind of give us a little bit of a, a break between them so we can tell. So map P, that will start out, I guess we'll start out at the, uh, at the upper left corner, or sorry, the bottom left corner, uh, assuming that uh, we're, we're actually doing that, uh, that we're not doing the Y flip in here, are we? Yeah. Let's see here, map LOD cannot convert. Yes, that's true. There we go. So let's take a look. I, I actually think it might still be in the upper corner now that I think about it, just because of the way uh, that that's working. Okay, so what, the, oh, oh right. It draws those yellow markers everywhere, so we actually see the yellow markers for the things we drew. I'm actually gonna, I wanna draw just one of those um, because I also want to know what our coordinate system is here because we still haven't finished any of the renderer coordinate system stuff. Uh, so, all right, so yeah, it is, it is upper left still because these are all actually screen coordinates that we're passing in. So LO, the end map zero, which is our bottom map, is the one that appears on the top, and then it goes down from there. We uh, might have to scale these by half. You know, we might have to do something like this because otherwise they wouldn't all fit. Uh, so if I do that, we could actually probably get uh, all three of them on the screen. You can see them there, one, two, three. Uh, and obviously there's nothing in them right now, the alpha value. Uh, is is incorrect everywhere. It's it's going to be zero everywhere. So there's really nothing to see. Uh, but we're start to fill them in. We should start to see something. So let's say um, for starters, um, I guess every time every frame, what we would want to do is we'll start off by clearing those guys uh, and drawing some stuff into them. Uh, again, stuff that we can test for normal mapping. So when we start off uh, with our rendering, I guess what I'll do is say, well, I guess I can even do this down here since this is just test code at the moment. Before we start rendering any of this stuff, what I wanna do is actually prepare uh, those maps. So the easiest thing I could do is I could actually use the draw rectangle call from the render group, right? I can, I can just point the draw rectangle call at, uh, our, our one of our bitmaps and I can fill it with a color. So the very first thing we could do is we could fill say the bottom with red and the top with blue and then if we do our normal map lighting we should at least be able to see uh, red tinge and, and blue tinges on the tops and bottoms of our stuff, right? So I'm just gonna start with the simplest, most simple thing there uh, and that is what that would be. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clear uh, our, our bitmaps here, all, all of the LODs. I'm gonna clear them all uh, so that we can you know, start with that. I'm sorry, not all the LODs, just uh, that top LOD. So if I take the trans state, if I take uh, the zeroth map, zeroth LOD, or load, you know, I don't even know how you pronounce that. I usually say LOD, it just sounds so clunky though, doesn't it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> either way though, uh, if we if we go ahead and and uh, and uh, allow us to say LOD, if I take this guy and, and I go ahead and, and produce what's essentially a full clear for him, 
right? And so that's just be trans state and map width, uh, trans state uh, and map height. And, you know, I really could just pass some really huge number here too, because it'll clip. Uh, so that would be fine as well, but you know, wh whatever. So I'll clear the ground, I guess I'll clear it uh, to pure red. And I will clear uh, the middle to pure green, which we're probably not using at the moment. Um, or at least I don't think we should be. I, th I think we might have some code in there actually that is using it at the moment, uh, which might be a mistake. We should probably turn that off uh, for what we're doing at the, the, at the moment. But anyway, then we'll make the sky, the sky will be blue. So it's, let's see here. No conversion, that's true, but I think we can just use our I to convert those from uints to reals. And then we've got to actually do uh, just that should be fine, right? We're just using the zero with one here, which I'll kind of denote, even though it doesn't actually need to happen. So there's our RG and B clears. And hey, look, you can already see uh, that it's actually sampling from it. We can see a bug already, which it looks like I inverted the sense of the blend that's happening here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, you know, you can see how the blue properly is sort of feathering out there. I don't know if it's feathering out entirely correctly, but it's like feathering out. So you don't see a super harsh line, but with the red, you do see that really harsh line. Uh, and that's not at all what we want, right? Uh, that's, that's, that's not good. So what I can do there is I can go in and, and fix that, which is good. Uh, we've already kind of found one thing uh, that we did wrong. Uh, so that's in here, right? And if you see, this is, this is the stuff uh, that's actually supposed to be, what's, what's a little bit odd here, even also to think about this, the way this is working, um, this was supposed to be our ground map, but we're actually getting it on top and this was supposed to be our sky map and we're actually getting on bottom. So we also have a, a sort of a flip in the sense of who is doing what here, which is another thing uh, that we should track down, right? All right, so we've got plenty of stuff to work on here. Let's get started. And again, this is exactly why I'm doing it this way. You can imagine that if we had just actually done some lighting in here, it would have been much harder to tell what's going wrong and so this is, uh, we've, we've done this once before when we were doing bitmap loading. Structured art is a very important way to debug code because code, especially rendering code, is often very complicated and it's really easy both to have subtle bugs and also to have hard bugs that are difficult to debug even if they're not subtle. And structured art is a good way to help you, to guide you through that process because there's no sense trying to debug a subtle situation when you could f instead first make it very pronounced. Because then if you make it very pronounced, it's much easier to see what's going wrong and that helps guide the debugging process. Whereas if you constantly are actually fighting with always real data, uh, then it makes it so much harder for you to actually see where the problems are and see what's going wrong because it's hard to look at some uh, arbitrary data and say, yes, that's wrong, yes, that's right. When we have something so clear uh, as just like bright red or bright, bright blue and we can see where it's going, we kind of know that there's a problem. And so the other thing we'll probably do, uh, what, I, what I might suggest we do very sh shortly here, is actually just fill this, this with a white debug texture or something as well so that we're only looking at that sphere uh, normal map that we drew in there so that we don't have to worry about the underlying um, tree either. But that's not really that important right now. It's not really getting in our way too much. So let's take a look at this. First of all, we know, uh, I guess the bottom map, whatever the bottom map that's coming in here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, and just, just do this, right? I'm going to change it to top. So we're just sampling the top map. So we know that the top map is correctly coming in as blue, but we do know that we're picking it incorrectly. And so we're taking a look at this normal dot y and we're saying if that is less uh, than negative 0.5, meaning it's, it's pointing uh, in the negative direction, we're saying that that's gonna be bottom. And so what that must mean, I feel like probably suggests uh, that our normal map is actually sort of pointing in the wrong direction, it would seem. Uh, I'm not totally sure about that, uh, but let's go ahead and check, right? Uh, make sphere normal map. So here we are. Uh, and yeah, so 
we're coming in here, we've got our height as our y goes, it starts off, yeah, I mean, you can already see that it's wrong, right? We're starting with, we, we make our low y values uh, so that they encode that way, um, but our bitmaps is top down at the moment, right? Uh, currently, I believe our, our spec the way we were specifying our bitmaps was, was top down, right? Because the pitch, uh, I'm assuming anyway that that's the way we were start we that we we're starting it. Uh, we could always take a look here. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a mistake to be sure. I guess we should think about it a little bit, how we want our bitmaps to be structured. Do we want them to be top down or bottom up? Hmm. Hmm, because really I think we probably want our bitmaps to normally actually be bottom up, not, not top down. And the reason I say that is because most graphics APIs like you know OpenGL and stuff, they want uh, the bitmaps to be uh, bottom up as well. So it seems like that's probably something we would want to be using. Hmm. I guess we'll let that sit for a minute, but I think maybe that might be something that we tackle sooner rather than later. Uh, because again, while we're here in the renderer, I don't wanna to get too far down the path of not having our coordinate system straightened out. Uh, and so maybe what I'll say is maybe let's, let's think about pretty soon going ahead and straightening up this coordinate system stuff. Uh, and so we kind of did this, um, it's true. We, we just straight up did this uh, even before our architecture explanation was, was complete. Uh, but so we're doing lighting right now and the other thing we need to do obviously we need optimization in here uh, but what we want to do is straighten out all coordinate systems uh, coordinate systems uh, that screen world texture uh, so that we have all of those uh, consolidated before we go any further but all right, we'll skip that for now. So we'll just allow those to be wrong. We'll have those be wrong for now because we're not sampling them incorrectly. As it turns out, uh, we are actually sampling them properly. So that's okay. So with our sampling, what did we do wrong uh, on our uh, bottom map though? Uh, let's see here. We have our TM map. We are saying that it's, uh, we're going to add one to it. That means that it ranges, yeah, so the problem here is that we're going the wrong direction. You can actually see that that's what's happening because TM map's gonna range from negative one uh, all the way to negative 0.5. And the problem here is that we're going to, at zero, this is going to be zero. But at zero, this should actually be one, right? So this is actually inverted, if you will, uh, from what it should have been. And we can probably go ahead and multiply that through uh, if we want to simplify things. Uh, I don't know that we really care that much about it, uh, but you can actually see in here, right, we could have, uh, we could have uh, simplified uh, this guy a little bit more, right? Because if we multiply the two through, uh, so let's multiply the two through, we would just get that, right? Uh, and so if we do that, we end up with this, right? And so we can then move this uh, over here and subtract. So we'd end up with negative 1.0 uh, minus two uh, times TM map. Uh, and uh, yeah, in theory that, uh, what did, wait, that can't be right. Did I do that wrong? I did that wrong. What did I, what did I mess up? It's a bad math day, obviously. Let's do that one more time. Looked like I did it wrong to me. Maybe it didn't look like I did it wrong to you, but we have this guy and he's going the wrong direction. So we've got it. Uh, we want to be able to subtract one from it. In fact, I can verify first that that's uh, correct. And you can kind of see now how we get uh, that tapering that we had wanted to get uh, there, right? So if I multiply a negative two through, like I was saying, I should get that and negative two, right? That should be what we're getting. Uh, and so that seems and that's still correct. Uh, so yeah, I guess I actually was correct there. Negative two, that produces negative one. That looks like, why does that look totally wrong to me? TM map, no, I guess that's right. That's right because this is always negative 0.5 to negative one. 
So it's always at least going to add one. So hey, yeah, math is right even when you're wrong. I don't know if that's a good way to say that. Uh, but it's okay, so that's fixed now uh, and we're doing our sampling. So that's all fine. And uh, what we wanna do now is probably take a look at actually computing where we're sampling from a little more accurately because we're not really doing that uh, at the moment. And I'm not exactly sure what the best way to do to produce a test texture for that is, but I'm guessing that really the best way might be to put in some kind of a checkerboard or something uh, so that we can, you know, uh, we can see a pattern, a very clear pattern that we'll be able to recognize. So I'm going to go ahead and, and put that in here uh, so that we can actually, so that we can actually see something. Uh, all right, so uh, if I do this, we've got, uh, I got my map index, that's going to go through each map, and then I'm going to try to do just a checkerboard here. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't really know. <clears throat> I'm going to make this up as I go along. Let's say we're going to make a 16 pixel uh, checkerboard. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, so we're just going to go through uh, whatever that LOD's width is, and we're going to just go by by uh, you know uh, checker checker dim. Uh, let's do checker width and height actually. Oops, height. So I'm just going to go through both of these and say, all right, I've got you know uh, the x and the y, and I want to make a checkerboard, right? And so I'm going to go through here and I'm going to draw into the uh, LOD that we're on, like so. And I want to draw from, you know, a min P to a max P. And, uh, you know, the max P is always going to be the min P uh, plus checker width, checker height, right? Uh, and like so max P min p uh, and then in here we want to uh, be able to set uh, the color essentially and so what i want to do is i want to say um, i wish draw a rectangle in fact i could fix this right now in fact let's just go ahead and do that let's fix this um, compile that i'm going to make draw rectangle take a color value just like everything else so like that right uh, and that way we can say that the red is color R, the green is color G, the B, blue, uh, is color B, and the A is color A. And then I'll just force everyone else to use that. Oops. And let's see. Redefinition of formal product color, that'll be color 32 now. So, and now all of these draw rectangles. Uh, oh, they actually have uh, things going going pretty nicely for them actually because they can just do, uh, you know, a, a pass a color there. I don't know if we've written two v four or not, but we will now. Looks like the alpha value is always the same here. So, yeah, and. There. All right, keep going. So we have not done 2v4 yet. Uh, so there's our color. This this just simplifies this down because we're already we've already got the entry color. So that's good. Uh, looks like this one uh, rectangle was still storing just an RG and a B. Is that correct? Yeah. So these guys should really just be storing color now because we're we're v4 it up here, people. All right, there we go. Uh, so these guys are going to call entry color, uh, like so. Entry bitmap, well, is, is if zeroed out, so I don't even know what that's doing. All right, so color being passed here. Again, that should all just work in theory. And these guys can now be much more simplistic because they actually can just pass straight through, which is great. Uh, that's what we want. So 
that way there's less shuffling, less, uh, less fussing. And so 2v4 is just a thing that uh, I usually define in math libraries so that you can quickly get from one to the other really easily, right? And they're, they're just like, you know, if I have a v4, I define 2v4, which takes a v3, uh, which is like x, y, z, and then it takes the w, right? Um, it's really, really basic, right? And so the result, uh, the result dot x, y, z equals x, y, z, and the result dot w equals w, and then it returns it. That's it. Uh, and I usually just do one of those uh, for each dimension up. Um, and I guess we only actually have two here, right? Uh, so if you want to make a v3, it'd be the same thing, right? You do something like this, and then it produces that by, by construction. Right? Uh, and that's it. Whoops, there we go. All right, uh, so we're still drawing that there. That's good. Uh, but now let's go back, let's jump back to our quote unquote checkerboard drawing routine. So if I draw this guy here, now I can pass a color value to it. And what I wanna do is I wanna set the color value uh, equal to this particular LOD's color, right? Uh, I mean, this particular map's color. And what I'll do there is I'll say, all right, there's a map color uh, per index here. So we'll just do map color equals, right? And we'll define uh, three of these map colors. So I guess I can do V4. Well, no, we only need three for the map color. Uh, so I'll define it the same way that we were defining it before, where we've got it uh, red, green, and blue, like so. And then this color will just always be whatever the map color is uh, initially for the map index. But then once we, uh, once we see which part of the checker we're on, we'll optionally turn it to black, right? All right, so the min p is also pretty simple. The min p is just the x and the y, right, that we have. So, because this is already going by the checker width and the checker height. So the min p and the max p are known, the color is known. So the only thing that we have to do now is we have to figure out where we are on the checkerboard, right? Uh, we have to figure out uh, essentially which checker we're on. I think I'm to, instead of doing that by math in there, I think I'm just gonna do it uh, by a toggle. So I think I'm gonna do it with like checker on, right? Uh, and so then what I'll say is, you know, checker on, uh, it'll either be, if the checker's on will be the map color, otherwise it will be black, like so. Uh, and then I'm just gonna set uh, checker on equal to not checker on, like so. Uh, now in order to do that, I need to alternate on rows as well. So what I'll do there is do it row checker on, like so on, and then do checker on equals row checker on, and then row checker on, <clears throat> excuse me, equals not row checker on. I think that should do it. Uh, let's see here. LOD height, uh, signed unsigned mismatch. So the heights are ints, is that correct? I guess so. Uh, let's take a look here. And then we need to specify what we want our checker width and height to be. And I guess I'll just call those for now, 16 by 16. Although I guess our height is less, so let's do eight. Um, no conversion, I agree with you. Let's get an alpha value in there. Uh, well maybe, I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna do there. We'll see what we're gonna do. Let's leave it 16 by 16. All right. So there is our checkerboard. Lovely, isn't it? Uh, you can actually see our bilinear filtering in action as well, because I don't know if you can see there, but right in there, you've got like, when it's in between uh, two samples, it actually produces the sort of uh, a different value, right? It produces a, an in-between value. Uh, so we've produced our checkerboard. Now what's interesting about this is you'll notice we're not getting any light anymore on this entire thing. Uh, which is particularly interesting just because I guessing that means that wherever we're sampling the tree, uh, the tree is, is essentially getting into a situation where it's only picking up some black texels. Uh, I'm guessing that's true. And I suspect that's probably because we haven't also haven't done any of the, the stuff for actually figuring out where we should be looking in the texture map. So now would be a good time for us to go uh, in there and actually start to to make that happen. What I do want to do though, just quickly beforehand, is I also want to clear uh, this guy out. Uh, 
because I'd rather just see like just the normal map uh, would be my preference. So what I want to do is instead of using that tree, I think what I'm going to do instead uh, is we've got that tree normal thing here. Instead of that, I think I'm going to just full on make a test thing, uh, which is like, uh, you know, test bitmap and test normal map, right? Uh, I guess we can call this the diffuse color. I don't know what we'll call it yet because we're not sure exactly what it act, what can, what it actually will be relative to our lighting equation, but we'll call this test diffuse and test normal. And then what we'll do is when we make that tree normal map, right, uh, right here, instead that's going to be uh, a thing which actually makes two here. So we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and take uh, that test diffuse and say that we want to copy its width and height. And then we want our test normal uh, to be a sphere normal map with zero roughness off of that. Uh, let's see, test normal. But what we also want to do here is say game state test diffuse equals make empty bitmap. Uh, and that's going to be uh, however big we want this guy to be. So I don't know what that's going to be for now. We'll say that it's 256 uh, by 256 maybe. That seems reasonable. Uh, maybe a little bit large. We'll see. Uh, and then we will have to fill it with something. Again, not particularly troublesome there. <clears throat> I can just do a draw rectangle call for that as well. So I can do a draw rectangle into this test diffuse. Uh, I can say that I want it to be from 0, 0 uh, to its width height, right? Like so. Oops. Uh, and then I can just say the color is going to be like a neutral gray, just so we can kind of see uh, what, what it all is, right? Uh, like so. Okay. Tree normal is not a member of game state. That's true. Test diffuse, test normal. And what? Oh, right. I, <laughs> I always forget when I change the size of something. We don't support that in the dynamic reload. Um, all right. So, uh, of course, I probably should not make it the same gray <laughs> as our background. Okay, I admit that that may have been a mistake um, because then we can't tell if it's drawing or not. That, yeah, okay, you know, I, I admit that that was, that, was a, that was an oversight. Okay, it was definitely an oversight. Let's try that again. Um, okay, there we go. So now we've got that guy in there and now we should be able to see if we're actually getting lighting contribution in there when we start to work with, uh, you know, the, the actual bounce stuff. Okay, so how much time we got? Oh, not very much. 554. Well, I guess we won't have time uh, to do what we want to do here, which is actually go through and work out the bounce math, but we can do the bounce math tomorrow. That's fine. Let's just take a look at what we were doing here. Yeah, so we're not actually doing uh, anything in terms of figuring out where the sampling is, so that's why we aren't getting any lighting contribution. It's just picking the upper corner of the map. So what we need to do here is we actually need to do uh, the work to look up into the map and see what is actually where, you know, what is something in the, that's actually, uh, figure out some actual value. Now we could act, we could do something kind of cheesy, right? Um, we could do something where we use like the normal, for example, to pick where we want to be in the map, right? I mean, you could imagine something uh, that did, you know, like a, uh, starts with the width and then moves by that, uh, you know, moves by the width over to uh, <clears throat> picking the, the normal's x coordinate, right? Or something like that. Uh, I'm just totally making this up, but you know what I mean, right? You could imagine something that was doing sort of a more uh, straightforward thing here. This is not at all what we'd want to do, but it's something that will at least pick stuff uh, out of it. Oops. There we go. Um, and hey, you can see that it's sort of starting to get that uh, reflection in there. It's, we're not really there yet because it's, it's literally just sort of using that as almost a deferred texture lookup. Uh, but at least we kind of know that, that what we're trying to do is sort of working, right? So that's all good. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if those are exactly by, well, no, those are probably fine by linear samples now that I think about it. So that's, that's probably fine too. So yeah, I mean, it all looks pretty good. I think I just don't want to get started on trying to actually do the sampling properly here because 
uh, we probably just do not have the time uh, to actually do that. So I'm guessing that probably I should I should call it quits. Um, and uh, yeah, and then we can you know we can pick up uh, a little bit later. We can pick up this uh, this how we do the actual math to figure out where the sampling should be tomorrow. And uh, we also kind of got to think and keep in the back of our heads that we got to do something with the with the middle range, the with the green. And I have no idea what we're going to do with that, so we got to we got to plan that out a little bit. That's going to be a bunch of work, I think, figuring out how that's going to slot in there. All right, so I guess we can go ahead uh, to a um, Q and A, the Q and A now, like so on. <clears throat> All right. Let's do Q and A. Please prefix your questions with Q colon so I can see them. And uh, please try to keep the questions on topic. I tend to skip off topic questions. I, I do off topic questions on the pre-stream. So if you wanna ask off topic questions, you can. You just gotta come back uh, tomorrow, 15 minutes before the stream starts. Looks pretty calm though. Looking pretty calm. Poo shoes. In the move entity function, you have two variables that are never used, new player P and old, old player P. Will you delete them for me? Um, will you delete them for me? Well, I don't know. Are they doing anything that we might want to use later? old player P and new player P. Um, yeah, that's, this is probably gonna get a, a pretty big hatchet taken to it anyway. So if for some reason you really want them to go away, uh, we could delete them, yes. Uh, that's totally fine. Would this scheme let you have a pool of water reflect a starry sky? Um, well, the question is, so what would determine that would really be mostly what you're going to do with the, with the resolution of these maps. I mean, yes, obviously the technique will let you do that, but we, there's, there's a bunch of things you have to keep in mind in terms of sampling. And so if you think about what's happening in here, I can sort of give you a little bit of preview of why that might be a little bit rough, um, uh, just in terms of, of keeping things uh, looking good. So the problem, right, is that you end up with, when you, when you have something that you're sampling, like a reflection like that, right? Um, you know, you've got these sort of normals and you've got bounces that are coming in, like whatever direction we're looking from, we're bouncing back up. And depending on the normal, we're sort of getting different bounces that may or may not be coherent into this, you know, texture map, right? And what ends up happening is, those bounces are going to sample this texture map, but they're going to sample it sparsely. So there's no guarantee that you won't get some really bad artifacting in there because of the fact that you might be sampling like very far apart. Like one bounce um, here might sample there and then the very next bounce may sample like all the way back here. And so you just don't, you don't get the kind of anisotropic filtering that you might want for a pretty starry sky reflected in a pool of water, right? And so I don't necessarily guarantee that we're going to try and solve that problem because what I'm looking for here is more lighting and not reflections. And so what we'll probably do is end up using fairly low resolution maps so that you wouldn't really do reflections. They'll more be for more like glossier sort of lighting stuff and not as much for reflections, but I don't know. Uh, so that's really why I would say you you have a bit of an issue there. To be honest with you, I don't 
I'm not really sure how people normally try to solve that problem in 3D. When they do, typically what they'll do is they'll render the scene, uh, they'll do something very similar to what we're doing. They'll render the scene from the perspective of the, of the plane of that it's bouncing. And I just don't know if they, tr if they do anything fancy to try and prevent the sampling from getting ugly or whether it just does get ugly. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe you turn on like anisotropic filtering for those textures to try and, uh, well, I don't even know that anisotropic filtering is really gonna help. I guess it would. So I don't know. I don't really know how they try to fight this when they're doing a reflection in 3D. Um, because I think they would have the same problem and I'm not sure how they try to correct for it. And maybe that they just don't and you get sparkliness, I'm not sure. But that's the thing to watch out for. If you want to see the lighting distort according to the spherical shape of the normal map, would that just be part of fixing the map in the section where you sample from the end map? Yeah, uh, that is literally it. Like when we do that tomorrow, it should bend. And then that'll be that. Uh, but until we do, we're not actually doing that. So obviously it doesn't behave like a reflection because we're not calculating a reflection. Uh, big, big surprise, right? What are the benefits to having three top, middle, bottom M maps versus just using one M map for the whole thing? Uh, so I don't know how I would use one environment map for the whole thing because like, I don't know how to get spatialness to that, right? Um, like I don't know how to get height involved there if I don't make multiple maps, uh, if that makes sense. So, really that's most of it. If I knew how to get everything out of one map, I probably would, uh, but I can't think of anything offhand. So here's like, uh, just to give you a preview of sort of what I've been thinking of. What I've been thinking of is there's a ground, right, texture, which we already made. So what we would do is we'd splat lights into here, right? Basically, so, I'll say the, the steps here. So here's our ground. So for the ground, right, you'd splat the ground texture in there like we were doing, right? So we're already doing that because we want to draw that on the screen. We would then um, splat the shadows for those things, for, for entities on there, right? Uh, and we might even say, take the shadows and do those in a separate bitmap. So we might actually have ground and shadows as two different bitmaps, right? Uh, and then we take the middle map, which is where the lighting is, right? So there's lights written into that middle map, right? We take that and we draw that into the ground map. So we like add these lights into the ground map, right? Uh, and then we've got sort of a ground map that has lighting in it that's also got the shadowing in the ground texture. Then we have a middle map that just has the lighting, right? And then we have a top map that has none of those things. Like the top map just has some sky stuff or whatever, or like whatever is above us, right? And then when I'm sampling to try and get the 3Dness out of it, I feel like that will give me sort of a ground plus lights down here, a ground plus light bounce basically down here, um, light in here, just light uh, and occlusion, and then, you know, um, sky up here which is what I'm looking for. I, I don't know how else to do that with just one environment map, with just one map. Like, I, I don't see how that would work, really. Um, it, it, that's basically it. I'm not sure I understand the point of the bottom map. Will the ground be contributing lighting to objects above the ground? Yes, 
I mean, that's that's what happens in real life too, right? Like bounce off the ground is like a big part of what determines the look of things that are sitting on the ground. Um, and so I was just gonna see if we could get some of that in there. Now, once we actually get all this working, if we find that we don't use one of these, we'll just get rid of it, right? Because we can easily just save computation by just getting rid of it. Uh, so my goal was first to put in all three see how the effects come out and anything that we find just isn't useful we just nuke it uh, and so we could end up with just the middle map if that's all we need uh, but if it turns out that the other ones do add a nice effect we'll keep them Alrighty, any other lighting questions? Looks like no. Will you need a set of end maps for each level in Z? Uh, my thinking is yes. And I was thinking that basically what we do is they would just kind of cascade in some way, right? Um, like I'm thinking that we would basically like start with the lowest level ground, right? And that's gonna get rendered. Uh, and that'll be the bottom end map. And then we, you know, after we have the sky map, which is essentially the ground map of the thing above us. Um, sort of like inverted like so we would take what the alpha is of the ground map that we would be using next right uh you know if there's a, an alpha of the ground which basically tells us where it is we would use the alpha map of that composited with the middle map of the layer above us would tell us where the lighting like it's the inverse alpha of that composited with the lighting above us middle map lighting above us would tell us where lights will be shining down into us so you know that's how in stacked things we would get light lights that are moving above us to be you know sort of shining down i don't know if we want to go that crazy but we could right and that'd just be part of that process of peeling Z, you know, of rendering the bottom first and then up, up and up and up. Any plans for doing over brightening on the lights or even HDR? Um, I'm not sure. So, I mean, basically, like, I don't think I want to do HDR just because I'm not sure how we would really get away with it uh, in software. I mean, we could... I, I'm guessing that the only thing that we'll really be able to do in terms of overbrightening on the lights is using that middle buffer, possibly using that as like a bloom kind of a filter or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't see us being able to really do HDR in a software pipeline just because I just float 16. I don't even know. Yeah, I mean, I guess we could try to. Yeah, no, I, I can't. Honestly, I really can't think of any way that we would really be able to do that. Um, you know, maybe we try to fit in a separate uh, sort of blur buffer at some point that, that can get a little bit of the bloom in there or something like that but but i don't i don't really see us being able to do much uh in the way of of hdr in the software pipe could you contain all lighting information in a five byte bitmap uh, 0 to 25 absorbance reflectance scale for RGB, alpha, and scattering. 
I want to try it, but I feel really hesitant because you warned against non 32 bit aligned structs. Um, so I guess I, I don't. Uh, I mean, I, I, it's, it's probably fine. I would, I wouldn't say that non 32 bit aligned structs are necessarily a problem because you're pulling this stuff in sort of as pixel values anyway. And so you could probably get away with a five byte bitmap format. I don't know that you'd have too much problem with that because even if you did have a problem with that, you could just pack, um, you know, a couple of them together and, and sort of have less of a problem with the uh, with sort of the unaligneness of it. But I guess what I'd ask is where does the normal go in that scheme, right? Um, that seems like kind of a kind of the issue. Grumpy Giant 26 says even just using zero to two lighting range gets good results. Um, we could, I mean, yeah, we could do something where we say that there's, you know, a zero to 255 actually maps, you know, to, to double bright or something like that. Um, I don't know. I'll have to think about it. Uh, I, I will have to think about it. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Do you plan on camera level lighting effects such as stun grenade for lack of a better example? Um, I don't. No. Are you talking about just taking the screen and overlaying stuff onto it or brightening it? Uh, that's pretty easy for us to do, certainly. Um, I don't know how much of that we really need to have in this particular game, but we could totally do that. It's not very hard. If you could do without alpha, you could possibly use RGBE, where the E is the exponent for all the channels. Uh, I mean, it's just, it complicates things a lot through the pipeline if you want to do HDR properly. Um, like if you do RGBE, for example, you're constantly having to deal with how you load out and repack that E. Um, which is a real pain. Now, I mean, it's possible. I don't know if it's plausible, but it's possible we could do something with HDR. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I would lean towards not trying to, to put HDR in here because I think we have enough stuff to worry about. Uh, I'm not sure that I really want to try and do much with HDR. Uh, but, you know, I mean, it's not really the case that the renderer is completely locked and difficult to uh, change too much once you do it. I mean, you know, once the architecture is in place, a lot of times you can make modifications to it. So it's not out of the question that we could do it non-HDR and then later on make it more HDR, right? Um, that's not, not really out of the question, but I'm not sure. We could sort of keep an eye on that and make sure that we don't do things that will make it really difficult. Is saturation hard to overlay? Uh, no, saturation is actually pretty easy to overlay uh, if you want to. Um, in fact, you can kind of just, just pull to the average. Uh, like, uh, I mean, a, a pretty simple example, right, is, uh, you know, we could we could do a pretty a pretty easy uh, example of, of how that works, right? So, you know, uh, with our clear here, where's our clear render entry clear? So if we had something that was like uh, render entry saturation or something, right? Uh, you could imagine having a thing that's like. A saturation value where you can just do a post pass and change whatever the saturation ends up being of the final thing. Uh, that's not too hard to do. Um, it would basically just be, you know, I'll give you a, a quick sketch of what that would be like. Uh, so when we have our, our clear, uh, we can do a saturation here uh, where it just passes whatever that saturation level is. Uh, I guess we'll just say the value or the level. I don't know what you would call that. 
level. Um, so we can push on a saturation and uh, set that level to level. Uh, and then, you know, in here, when we actually do uh, whatever our math is, uh, which is, let's see, here we go, where we're pulling stuff out. When we grab one of those, <clears throat> right, um, render entry saturation, we can do a thing where we just loop over the output target and for every pixel that's in there, change its saturation, right? Um, and so uh, we could just have a change saturation call, which takes the output target uh, and you know just takes that that level parameter. Uh, and if I go to draw a rectangle, like so, uh, if I take that out, uh, I actually don't want that exactly. What I'd rather have is draw bitmap probably. Okay, here we go. So if I take draw bitmaps code. Uh, and change that to change saturation, right? And I just say, okay, I've got the buffer that I'm changing and uh, the saturation level. Uh, then what I could do is is force this thing to loop over everything, right? So just go ahead and do dest row like this, uh, and just have that loop over everything in the buffer. So both the width and height, full width and height. Uh, it doesn't read any texels or anything like that, right? But it does read in the dest, like so. Um, and really all that you would do here uh, is when you have this, this uh, destination that comes in, uh, instead of, of actually doing any blending with the text or anything like that, you can just sort of desaturate it, right? And so one way to desaturate it, uh, pretty easy way. In fact, I guess what I should do is just double check that I haven't ruined anything here. Um, but uh, so let's just go ahead and say that uh, result equals D for now. Uh, saturation, there we go. Uh, so if I go in here, uh, here's, what, here's our screen as it stands currently. If I go in here to handmade.cpp and I add a saturation in, uh, like so, so we do right before our render output, I do saturation render group um, 0, 0.0. So that would remove like, well, actually, I, I guess, well, yeah. Uh, that should give us the same screen we had, right? And so now if I come in here and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, actually make this do something, what you can imagine is you can imagine like um, the saturation is sort of how far from gray something is in some sense, you might say. Uh, and so, you know, we could convert to the HSV color space and then convert back or whatever, but you know, that might be a little expensive, although there's cheaper ways of doing it now. So we can look at all those, but I'll just show you a real quick way to do something stupid, um, which is, you know, you can imagine your R, G, and B values, right? Um, you know, we're sort of imagining them between zero and one, right? And they're kind of sticking like this sort of thing, right? And what we could say is, well, what if we just average them together, right? So we did like R plus G plus B, you know, over three or something, right? So we just took whatever the average was, and then we represented these as, as deltas off of that. Well, then we could just multiply the deltas by whatever our saturation amount is, and we'd go further or less away from gray, right? And so it's pretty trivial to hack in something like that, um, again, without having to do a whole HSV transform, although people have gotten those down to really cheap. So we, you know, if we really find that we want to do this and we want to do it accurately, we could probably just do uh, a real thing, but, you know. Uh, so I'm just going to do that average here is going to be uh, one over three, right? Uh, times the R plus the G uh, plus the B. So this is just the average color value. And you can do better things for grayscale estimation here because there's, you know, there's like your eyes more responsive to green and that sort of stuff. So you could do fancier stuff here to get the grayscale value. Really, you just, you just want to plug in here anything that produces a grayscale value from the R, the G, and the B, right? Uh, and so then you've got your, your delta, 
is just going to be the R of the G and the B minus that average value, right? So it's, it's whatever you would have to do to get to those color values from wherever you are. You know what I'm saying? So once you have that delta value, uh, then what you can do is just reconstruct uh, the new color, right? And, or I could just say, <clears throat> right, uh, I have a V4 result, and that's just going to be, uh, you know, my average, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, that's just going to be my average vector plus whatever that level is times my delta, right? So if it's 1.0, it adds it all back in. If it's zero, it doesn't add any back in, right? Uh, and then I want to keep uh, the alpha value the same because we're not we're not changing the you know the the brightness the the sort of uh, opacity I should say uh, of the thing. Oh, I forgot these are lowercase now. Still in my handmade hero, like oh I got to be uppercase. There we go. Uh, v4 two v4. There we go. Uh, so, you know, as you can see now, it's black and white, right? And uh, what we can do is we could drive that off of an animated parameter so you can see uh, that it's actually, um, you know, doing something. We have that, uh, that game state time thing in here. Angle, is that getting reset? Yeah, angle is getting reset. Uh, so I guess I just want my game state time here. Uh, so I could just do game state time 0.5f plus 0.5f times sine uh, game state time. Let's do that. Uh, and uh, in theory, I guess that's going to be a little too slow potentially. So we'll speed that up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so our frame rate is awful at the moment, obviously. So, you know, because we're still super unoptimized and all that. Uh, but you can kind of see that we're, you know, desaturating and, and, you know, and undesaturating, however you want to put that. Uh, but again, that's not really an accurate way to do it, but that's basically what you would do. So what you want to do here, if you want to be a little bit better about that, right, is you can just, what you want to do is, is uh, do a fast HSV transform and then, you know, uh, and, and then do, uh, um, well, you know, I'm not even sure that how much more accurate that even is. But if you did a fast HSV transform and then did a fast back, that would, that would basically be what you would need, right? Uh, and so that's, that's just how that would go. So hopefully that makes some sense. Will light get reflective horizontally from walls, et cetera, in this scheme? Uh, so potentially, that's that's really the part that's that's kind of what we're talking about with that middle layer. Um, and like I said, we don't really know yet how well we're going to be able to do there. Uh, but that middle layer is what we'll be trying to use to get some of that bounce, uh, that local bounce. So I don't know. A lot of this is just, you know, like I said, I don't know how, how well this scheme will work. It might be awful. It might be cool. I have no idea. Um, lighting in 2D is always kind of just a, you know, <clears throat> is always just a hack. And so it's how well you end up tuning your hack to if it, if it works or not, right? Um, and so we'll, we'll kind of see how much we actually can get out of it. <laughs> now we can oversaturate. It's true, we can oversaturate, I guess, by cranking that value. So, all right, no more questions, seems like. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and close down. Uh, I guess I'll cut that saturation out. We'll leave that in there. Just, I mean, might as well. Uh, but there we go. Okay, save the mischief. All right. Thank you everyone for joining me for another episode of Handmade Hero. It's been a pleasure coding with you as always. If uh, you would like to follow along at home and you want a copy of the source code, you can get that by pre-ordering the game. And you'll get an email that'll give you a link that you can use to download the source code every night after I'm done, I upload it so you can uh, check it out. And just play around with it and learn and uh, you know, 
it's a good way to learn to sort of tinker with, if that makes sense. We also have a Patreon page if you just want to support the video series, you can subscribe to that. Uh, it's always very appreciated. We also have a forums page that you can ask questions on or look at an annotated episode guide the community has put together. Uh, and also look at community ports to Mac and Linux, uh, which can be really helpful if you're trying to follow along on another platform and you're not that familiar with that platform. People have done a lot of work, a lot of groundwork there to make that easy for you. There's also a tweet bot which tweets the schedule. So if you want to follow along with the live stream, that's the thing to check out. And uh, speaking of that, we will be back here 5 p.m. Same time, same place tomorrow. Uh, right here on Twitch, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Hope to see you all here when we will uh, do our correct equation for bounce lighting, which we really do need to do because, uh, like you saw today, we have absolutely no curvature to our reflection, which is not good at all. So we'll be getting that fixed, uh, and then we'll sort of be moving on to uh, maybe we'll take a look at that uh, fixing all our coordinate systems uh, before we start moving on to things like optimization and, um, of course, trying to fill those light fields with something more usable than just red, green, and blue checkerboards. So thanks for joining us. I hope to see you tomorrow. Uh, and uh, whether I do or don't, please have a fabulous Tuesday uh, out there on the internet. Take it easy, everyone.